So, hello everybody, my name's Stacey and this is my first YouTube video for my new channel and I thought I'd start it off by doing a review for my camera that I use for astrophotography which is the Altair Astro Hypercam 183C Pro. I'll just say it now, I have no affiliation with Altair whatsoever, I just really really like their stuff and especially this camera and I'll explain why as we progress through the video. So first off we'll have a look at the outside of the Hypercam. So it's got this lovely deep purple anodized finish. Now I like my telescope gear to be colour coordinated so I was really drawn to this bright purple colour but colour isn't everything, it, you know, it's neither here nor there. But on the rear of the camera we've got a USB 3 port, um, it got ST4 ST port for guiding and sort of fan area for the fan cooling and we've also got vents on the outside and on the end, if we unscrew the cap, brings us to the sensor window which is inside there. So if we go onto that sensor, it's a 20 megapixel sensor which produces some pretty huge raw files. The actual dimensions of the sensor are 13mm by um, 9 millimeters. So if you are to buy this camera I suggest checking out a field of view calculator just to make sure that you can fit everything that you want to shoot in it. You might need to buy a reducer. I personally do use a reducer with my kit. But back to the sensor itself, it's massively sensitive. Um, you, whereas with DSLRs you might need to get it astro modified to make it sensitive to H-alpha. You don't need to do that with this. It's a Sony sensor so you know it's good quality. And it's got a small pixel size, now that could be good or bad depending on what telescope you're using. This sensor and camera is particularly good for short focal length refractors. So my uh, refractor's got um, a focal length of about 400 millimeters, um, and I actually reduce it down a bit. Whereas if you were to use a larger refractor, um, it probably wouldn't work as well and you'd probably want it to look at an alternative sensor. So what are some of the pros and cons of this camera? So when I was looking for a camera to do astrophotography, I read some really good reviews on the V2 version of this camera and I was like, okay, I really want it. And then I saw the Pro one come out and it had four gig of RAM, which helps um, with it to stop it dropping frames when you use like, a mini PC or stick PC, etc. I really like the price of it as well. Um, at the time, I couldn't afford a ProTech cooled camera, but this has a fan. So when it's cold outside, it will the fan will bring the temperature down, and we all know that the lower the temperature, the less noise, and that enables you to have less noisy images, and you can shoot loads more frames and get more dynamic range. And then the final sort of pro that, that swayed it for me was that it didn't need a separate power supply. You can literally plug it into your computer and the computer USB port will run it. A note on that though, um, when I had mine I plugged it into a USB 3 port because apparently it has a USB 3 port but the chipset on my laptop can't really handle the throughput of data from this camera so I have to ha I have to plug it into a USB 2 port so that it doesn't crash each time. In reality this doesn't really make a lot of difference to me because on my exposures I generally I stick to uh, 60 seconds, 120 seconds and if I'm using a H alpha filter then I'll probably do like 300 seconds which is another pro 
the sensor on this camera is so sensitive that you can actually do a bit of narrowband and I will include one of my narrowband images in the video so that you can actually see it. Now onto the cons. Main one is it's not pro tech cooled, so it's not Peltier pal cooled. Um, basically that means you can't bring your kit in and take your darks inside by setting it at a certain temperature. You have to take your dark calibration frames at the same time as you take your light frames. Now for me, that is a massive pain. I wish, sometimes I do wish that I'd gone for the, the pro cooled camera because I could just bring it in and specify minus 15 and let it run overnight and then that means I'd have more shooting time outside which in the British weather you know clear skies is a premium and another thing is you do get a starburst pattern if you don't use calibration frames um, but as I say if you do your darks and your flats um, DSS, D Deep Sky Stacker, Astro Pixel Processor and um, Pixisoy will easily calibrate out that um, starburst pattern. So what comes in the box? So I haven't got my box here but I can generally show you what it came with. So you get a 2 inch nose piece, a 1.25 inch nose piece, a USB 3 cable, And the only one I don't actually have to hand, it also comes with an ST4 cable. Also, also has a Facebook group which is great to share your photos. And they also have a, a Google users group which is great for support as well. Um, and that was one of the major selling points for me is that the support was in the UK rather than anywhere else in the world. because. I get really impatient. If something's going wrong, I want it fixed there and then. But that's just me. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'll stop talking now and I'll put some of my pictures in the video and hopefully um, you can see what might be possible with a short length focal length refractor and the Hypercam 183C Pro. Do I regret buying it? No, not at all. It's actually taken my imaging to the next level.